Titus 2. Consider. But speak you the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged woman, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women or woman to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, <laughs> good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God not be blasphemed. So let me ask you there, old woman, are you blaspheming God? By not submitting to your God, by loving your husband with unconditional love? <clears throat> Let me ask you, old man, are you blaspheming God by not loving your wife the way Christ loved the church unconditionally? That's a two-way road, folks. It goes for man and woman. There's rules for both of us. Do you hear what I'm reading right now? To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God not be blasphemed. Please, daughters of mine, never blaspheme God. Please don't blaspheme God. Young men, here we go, men. Young men, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded. Young men, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not prolonging, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. See, in the Old Testament, you can see him as God. In the New Testament, you can see him as the Lamb of God, the Father. And when he returns, he's coming back as God again. But he's coming back as an angry God. Very angry. It's going to be a time in which the world has never seen and never will from that day forth because he's coming back angry. Read your Bibles, please. Mm. That's scary to me. I don't know, you know, but that scares me. 
uh, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, not prolonging, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things, the grace of, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Everybody gets this chance. Please don't turn away from it. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should be live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope, Jesus and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar, zealous, a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority let no man despise thee. So that's chapter two of Titus. I'm going to uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a, a few videos here on Titus because I, th I think it needs to be heard. I think it needs to be heard. It needs to be heard. I mean, it, you know, I'm having trouble right now with, uh, or actually, I'm not having any trouble at all. But there are people. That are having trouble with me right now in my family in my immediate household to the point they don't want to be around me no more because i i read and i study this bible uh basically 24 7 and i um when i'm not reading and when i'm not sitting and studying i'm meditating and i'm praying so i'm not sitting here at my table 24 7 i misspoke please forgive me but I'm meditating on the Word 24-7. I'm praying without ceasing every time I think about it. I'm fighting my own thoughts and taking every thought into captivity. I'm using His Word and trying to apply these things in which He's revealing to me, to my heart and mind, and training me, this vessel, to be righteous. And because I'm doing that, I'm being told that I believe different. And I've just been told a lot of negative things, but everything that I'm practicing and memorializing is commanded in the word of the Lord. It really is. Uh, do I believe it's a salvation issue? Not until you're privy to it. Okay. And when you become privy to some things in the Bible, you're going to be held accountable whether you how you uh, observe and apply these things to your life. And you have to try to do it in a way that doesn't condemn anyone else with your words, just your actions. His words does the condemning along with your actions of obedience. So... That will convict the people around you to the point that they don't want to be around you anymore because they they feel condemned by your relationship with Elohim, your God. So my ride's here for Bible study. I'm going to go. You guys get your Bibles out and read them, man, and pray. Pray he opens your eyes and your ears for understanding. And he will open them. As long as you keep reading, you'll gain understanding. But you can't give up. You got to keep, keep reading. Peace. Have a good Sabbath.